question number two. Okay. So here, uh, this particular question is a continuation from the previous question here. Whatever we had done here on kinematics, difference between average speed, instantaneous speed and so on. So since the time was not sufficient, so we truncated this problem here and we are continuing with the next problem here. Okay, now let us continue with this. So this is again for 10 mark problem. So earlier also we had for 5 mark, totally it is for 15 mark. So we have divided this into two parts, right. A ball is projected horizontally at 5 meter per second from a vertical cliff of height 110 meter. Height is given, horizontal velocity is given. Assuming air resistance is negligible, okay, and g equal to 10. State the magnitude of the horizontal component of acceleration of the ball after it leaves the cliff. What is the horizontal component of acceleration? See, gravity is the only acceleration, only force which makes the ball to undergo a motion like this. It keeps on pulling it like this over here. While there is no acceleration along this direction. So, therefore, what is your answer? Your horizontal component is 0. Okay, it is 0 here. State. So, therefore, you need not explain anything. You can just say Z E R O. 0. Next, let us move on to the next one. And the axis below sketch the graphs to show how the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity of the ball. Remember, he is talking about velocity, not horizontal component of uh, acceleration. Vx and Vy changes with time until the ball, until just before the ball hits the ground, it is not necessary to calculate any values. So, what happens? When the ball is moving like this, the horizontal component of velocity remains the same. It does not change at all, right? Which means over time, it does not change. What about your vertical component of velocity? Initially, it was 0. Then, it increased a little bit. Then, a little bit more. Then, a little bit more. Then, much more larger. Then, once again, much more larger, right? See, as we keep on going downwards, See, the vertical component keeps on increasing and the maximum is seen at the ground when it strikes the ground. Therefore, the horizontal component, okay, there is no change in the Vx. So, you will always get a straight line parallel to the T axis. Vertical component, it is directed downwards. So, what will happen now? So, you should start from here, yeah, which is uh, not from here, sorry, from here, where is the Vy is equal to 0 when you throw it horizontally. And then it keeps on increasing and it goes like this over here. Okay. So, how many marks is this given over here? This is for two marks. So, it never becomes positive. So, one mark here, one mark here. Still, if you want, you can add one more thing. What you can say is you can just say the slope is equal to minus 10 meter per second square. If you write this, definitely you will get a mark for it. Okay. Because you know what is this? This is nothing but your acceleration due to gravity. Okay. Let us move on to the next one. Calculate the time taken for the ball to reach the ground. So, what has happened? You need to find out the time taken. How do you find the time taken? So, we know that minus h is equal to minus uyt minus half gt square, right? What did I do? I applied. This was the cliff over here and you threw the ball like this. So, the ball went down like this over here. I assumed that anything along this direction is x, positive x, this direction is positive y. So, this downwards is negative y. So, which means I am measuring a negative y value which is minus h, the height of the tower, okay. So, minus h, uy is 0. So, uy is 0 minus half g t square. So, this is minus h, negative, negative goes away. So, I am getting h is equal to half g t square, right. In other words, t should be equal to square root of 2 h by g. Simplify this, you get the answer. Now, what is the value of h? Look at the cliff over here. What is the value of h? 110. Then, g is already known to you, right. We are not using the v value here. So, therefore, this should be equal to square root of 2 into 110 divided by 10. If I cancel this, you get the answer as root 22. Let us find out what is the value of root 22. There is my calculator, square root of 22. Put a 22, put a square root, you get the answer as 4.7 seconds. So, thus the ball takes a time of 4.7 seconds to reach the ground. Okay. Next, calculate the horizontal distance moved by the ball. Okay, until it reaches the ground, which means what? He is asking you what is this distance, this distance is r. Okay, so therefore, this is nothing but this divided by time taken, the time taken by the ball to start from here and to reach here. It doesn't start from here, it doesn't start here, it starts here, right? Okay, but time is same, right? So therefore, it starts from here and to reach the ground is the same as traveling this side, should now be equal to the horizontal velocity, uvx over here. So what is uvx? Ux is nothing but what is the value of Ux? Horizontal component is constant, 5 meter per second, right? So, therefore, we will write this as equal to 5. You want the value of r? r is equal to 5t. t we already calculated. 
which would be 5 into 4.7, which would be how much? 5, 7, 35, 3, 5, 4, 20, 23.5 unit of this one is meters. Thus, the answer is 23.5 meters, right? And then the next one, another projectile is launched at an angle to the ground. How many marks is this for two marks? Okay, so one mark will go here, the other mark will go here. Then another projectile is launched at an angle to the ground in absence of air resistance. It follows the parabolic path shown below. Okay, fine, symmetrical. On the diagram shown, sketch the path of the projectile. Follow if the air resistance were not negligible, which means what? You are air resistance is not negligible. There is an air resistance. Now, what will happen if there is an air resistance? The first thing is that, see how many marks? Three marks over here. At least it should reveal three characteristics of the curve. So, how do I say? The first one is it does not reach the maximum height. It might reach only until here. Okay. And secondly, okay, the range will not be this much. It will not exactly come and fall here. But instead, it will start here, then, then it will go like this and then it will describe something like this, something like this over here. Now you see, this is the first point. First point is maximum height is not reached. This should be shown very clearly. See, this is the maximum height here, right? Not reached. Second point is that the range is not reached. Range is not reached. Maximum range is not reached. It falls before the range. The third one is that very, very important is non-symmetrical, non-symmetrical. See, this part, see, if you look at this here, okay, so you see this part, upper part is equal to down part because it's symmetrical. But when you consider here, it will not be symmetrical. It will show something like it is less skewed over here. So that is what you can see. So that's these three points are important to bag the entire three marks, okay. Now, so with this, we have come to an end to this particular problem. So, we are able to solve this in 7 minutes itself. Okay, let us move on to the next one. Thank you.